Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Anything anybody wants downtown? Oh, are you going downtown now, David? Mm-hmm. I want to pick up some tobacco, and there's a new book out. I thought I'd get it down at the stationery store. I'm disappointed. Oh, I'm not. That means we'll be home all evening. Perfect evening for a new book and an old wife. I'll overcome my disappointment if while you're in the village, David, you buy me a card of safety pins and a spool of number 50 white thread. What happens if I buy number 60? You will get spanked. Well, we don't want to do with that, do we? No. Well, let me see if I can remember everything. Tobacco, book, safety pins. Large for Bobby. I can't imagine how a baby goes through so many safety pins. He probably wears them out. Well, let's see, white thread. Fifty. Oh, and a bottle of ink for me. Blue. Ink blue. I should have never opened my mouth. Why not? All I said was I was going downtown for a mere can of tobacco and look at me with enough orders to keep a notion shop in business for a year. He likes to object, Mama. It's manly to object. Men always object to errands. Well, anything else while you're at it? David, you know, you're starting to look shaggy around the edges. Very shaggy. Mm. Tactfully, you're trying to tell me that I need a haircut, is that it? Mm, tactfully, yes. Oh, I thought you were planning to give a violin recital next week, David. Hello, Mama. He's a little big for a violin. But maybe we didn't know it, Claudia, and men are wearing their hair longer this year. But maybe you're right. Maybe they've dropped their hairlines to match our hemlines. Well, it might interest you to know that I know that I need a haircut. Mama, he knows. That's the first step. David, now seriously, why haven't you gotten a haircut, darling? Because Francis has appendicitis. Who is Francis? Francis is my barber, of course. Oh, 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 of course. course. And he has appendicitis. That makes everything clear. Well, is he the only barber in the world, David? As far as the nape of my neck is concerned, yes. See? Took me years to find and training. How long has it been that he's ill? From the looks of the back of your neck, I'd say a month at least. Oh, that's too long for appendicitis. Well, Francis had complications. Do they arrest men for long hair, Mama? For vagrancy. I guess the vagrancy's not very stylish this season. No barber besides Francis has touched my hair in the last two years. And no barber has touched it in the last two months, period. I must admit, Claudia, David always looks quite trim. Very well barbered, never with that flowery look. Mama, stop sabotaging. I simply refuse to believe there's only one barber in the world who can cut your hair, David. Why? What's it to you? Well, only that if it's true, it's... It's worse than being a woman. Speaking of women, they certainly don't make the fuss about their hairdresser that men make about their barbers. Don't they? Well, anyway, no more than. Mrs. Norton, may uh, may I go now? Go? Go where? Well, I was under the impression that there were some errands you wanted to run downtown. Don't forget oh, your yes. tobacco and your book, David. That's right, that's right, don't. Mm, your thoughtfulness overwhelms me. Mama's very fond of you, David. Don't let her actions deceive you. Well, I'll try not to. Oh, David, while you're at the stationery store, there's the sweetest little barber next door. How do you know he's sweet? He's Italian, and he looks sweet. He has a turned-up mustache and a... He's an excellent barber. When were you last barbered and shaved? Just last week. Please don't come home looking all shorn and naked, David. All what? Shorn and naked. You see men like that all over the streets, you know. I think the reason most men get such bad haircuts is that they they just don't pay attention. They read the stock market instead. Can't expect a barber to be interested in your hair if you're not. Can you, David? I am not following you. I lost you in the... In the middle of the stock market. It's all the same to you now, ladies. I'm still intending to go down to the village for a can of tobacco. So goodbye. Well, let me see you be the next victim, eh? Oh, thank you. Step up to the chair. We clip you good. Very good, eh? (laughs) This chair here, please. I hang up your coat, eh? Would you uh, put all those packages with them or I'll forget them? Oh, yes. Tony, he will remind you, eh? Uh, you were new up here, huh? Mm, fairly. The name is she's a Norton, and you live on a river road, yes? You a mind reader? Ah, your wife, she's a sweet looking a girl. She walk around with a big dog right by my window, and your man, Fritz, he's a come here too. How's your cow? Cow's fine. Good. Cow, she can act up, but not so good before calf she come. Oh, yes, yes. Yesterday, Jared the talker, he say, you are not so bad a neighbor. Well, that's very kind of Jared. 
Say, does everybody in Eastbrook have their hair cut here? Ma, sure. I am a native of Eastbrook. I cut your hair. You are native too. How are you on to your hair cut? Huh? Uh, not like Fritz, please, or, or Jared. Just trimmed a little on the side. Trim on the side? Mm, use the scissors in the back. Here's the scissors. Uh, not the, the clippers. Not the clippers. No. Uh, and not too much off of the top. Not too much uh, off of the top. Huh? Right, right. Uh, uh, just uh, one more question, huh? All right, go ahead. Just uh, why you want a haircut? Why I want... Well, look, my hair is too long on top and on the sides and the back. It's 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 shaggy. Hmm. Well, don't you think I need one? You don't seem to think so. You throw away 75 cents if you don't let, the, let the me give you a haircut. The farmers and the other men, they like a real good haircut. You just to throw away your money. Well, now, don't you worry about my money. You just cut it the way I said, and you will have earned it. But it hurt me. Well, it hurts me more if you don't. My wife will divorce me if I don't get a haircut, and she'll scold you if it's a bad one. Okay, okay, I do what you say, but she hurt. At least you want a nice treatment, then. Eh? Oil and... No, oil. no, no treatment, thanks. Just, just a haircut. Massage? No massage. Huh. And what you like on your hair afterwards? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Padre mio, you, you want nothing. Look, look, I have a such nice lotion, sweet like the perfume from a hair. No, thank you. Smell like the rose, no. or like the lily, or even like the back of you don't want to smell at all. Well, just the haircut, no, no smell. Please, please don't say haircut. You dignify it too much when you say haircut. What do you want a girl with a manicure scissors and not talent can give you? But what do you want, do you want? And that's, that's what you're going to get. I hope so. Now, relax and stop thinking. Eh? Your head is, is between Tony's hands. Yes, and I feel a cold breath on the back of my neck. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice hair you got. Not the bad. I'm going to cut it fine. I wish I could show you how good I caught the hay. Maybe, maybe some other time, I guess. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll take your word for it. Yes, yes. Whenever a man, he come to the shop, he knows what he wants. He's a married man. A married man. La, 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 la. Uh, no married man. He's a come in and he say, Tony, he say, cut my hair. And uh, Tony, he cuts it. La, 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 You sing it nice. La, 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 I think that's enough there on the left side. Enough? Yes. How about just to begin? So far, it's only the idea. That's just right. It's neat, but not gaudy. It looks very nice. It's trimmed, but it's not shorn. La, 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 I like this part. La, 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 beautiful, huh? very nice, yes. Hey, you know, she's going to be called the wind. And what do you think, eh? I'm going to say called the wind. And the stock market, she will go down in a march. You don't say. Look, I have a costume. He come here the other day. He's a city man. Mm -hmm. He come through by the car to go to Boston. And he tell me, if I ever got the stocks to sell in February and to buy in a March. In March. La, la, yes. Da, da, mm -hmm. da, da. And uh, look, I'm going to pass the information to you. He was a finer man. He said that the, the political situation mm, in this country... Uh, that's, a... uh, that, that's just about right on that side, Tony. That's fine. Thank just you. about right, eh? Mm -hmm. Look, I clip three hairs only, Mr. Norton. Well, that's fine, though. Uh, but the costume, I allow him to have an opinion. Thank you. He's a free man like Tony, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is going to be the quickest haircut in my shop. The longest haircut in the shortest time. You understand? And look, Mr. Norton, if Tony was a rich man, for this haircut, I charge it to you only one and Dave, is that you? David, if that is you, why don't you answer me for heaven's sakes? It's David, Mama. I can recognize David singing. He isn't Caruso, but he has a quality peculiarly his own. Hey, David, why are you loitering out in the front hall? Come on in. We've been waiting dinner hours for you. Can a man take off his coat and hat and comb his hair? No, a man's supposed to kiss his wife first. Where have you been? Running errands for you and Mama. Did you remember everything? I refuse to answer. That means he did, Mama. 
it certainly took you a long while. If I hadn't decided there was nothing to worry about, I'd have worried about you. I'll go tell Bertha to put this top on. I can hardly believe it took you so long just to buy a spool of thread, but if you say so. You sound suspicious. Maybe I'd better confess. Mm-hmm. There is more to this than meets the eye. Well, it should meet the eye, and Just but... to show you there's not an ounce of suspicion in me, David, I don't want to hear another word about what took you so long. Couldn't you find a parking space? Hmm? What's that? David, why are you staring in the mirror like that? Oh, just uh, looking at myself. Well, you're very handsome, darling. So you didn't have a flat tire or something? Or something, maybe. Honestly, when you're not talking, you're just impossible. Uh, Claudia. What? Nothing. See, you, you, you are behaving strangely, David. You don't usually go around looking at yourself in the mirror. Well, as you said, I'm a very handsome guy. Well, you act as if you never knew it before. Well, maybe I didn't so much. Claudia. What, what? I am surprised at you. What have I done? What have I said? You're, you're the one who's acting so strange. Well, I understand. Small wonder. Mm-hmm. It's a fine world when a man's own wife. Very quiet. Uh, do, do. He's acting very strange, Mama. Looks strange. I do how? Just strange. I think it's the way you're holding your eyebrow. Oh. Why? What did you expect me to say? No, no more than your daughter. You're right, Claudia. That little trip to the village to buy a spool of thread, and he's come back very weird. Oh, well, man's got a right to behave weird sometimes. Hey, David, you know something? What? You need a haircut. I what? Darling, maybe maybe if you had a haircut, you wouldn't look so strange. That, that helps a lot, you know. It makes a big difference. David, for heaven's sakes, will you stop rolling your eyes around that way? All I said is you need a haircut. Now, what is so terrible about that? As you buy your daily household supplies, it's nice to be able to pause and refresh right where you're doing your shopping. More and more stores are installing Coca-Cola coolers to enable customers to shop refreshed. It's a pleasant service that everyone appreciates. Well, how do you like that, Joe? You mean she didn't even notice? No. After all the fuss you made, she never even noticed. Say, tell me, Joe, what does a man do to a wife for a thing like that? That, David, is not written in any of the books. But uh, you'll think of something. Uh, I'll think of nothing else until I do. (laughs) Maybe you'll get even with her tomorrow. Tomorrow? Really? Well, Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, Better not say now. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll certainly be around. Uh, Look, uh, Joe, uh, don't you warn Claudia. Don't worry now, don't worry. I'm on on your side on this one. We men will have to stick together. And even then, it's tough. (laughs) You never said a truer thing. The women have a way of dividing the men. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. (laughs) 